in a lot of times in the traditional wrestling sense pre-pandemic, there were times where the audience would try and hijack the show. What? Where they would go and yeah, exactly, with things like a what chant, what? what? Or weird, silly, stupid chants to throw what? a wrestler off. Um, well, <laughs> that chant makes me angry. When you do it to me, I want to murder you. <laughs> Friends, follow along with me here. Exploding barbed wire death match. Two humans, one ring, multiple explosions. Throughout the pandemic, one of the most fascinating things to see is just witnessing how wrestling has continued to adapt because whether you like wrestling or not, the whole concept of a live audience is an experience in itself. When you think back to Andre the Giant, Hulk Hogan, all of those uh, majestic moments, you picture not just the wrestlers, but the background, the, the live reaction and all of that. So when the pandemic first started, we talked a little bit about WrestleMania and how wrestling at that moment was adapting. But now many months after, basically a year, how has pro wrestling adapted during the pandemic and what are our thoughts on this? We want to have this conversation, not just for the wrestling fans, even if you don't like, even if you hate wrestling. I think this is going to be quite the fascinating conversation on another exciting edition of A Cast of the Past with a brand new edition available each and every Sunday with yours truly, Juan Velas. I am from Puerto Rico and weighing in at an undisclosed amount of weight from parts unknown. Actually, he's from London, Ontario. We have Keith Hamilton. Now, Keith, yeah, in your case... quite known, really. Really? Really? Okay, so I left out the weight, though, just in case. I mean, yeah, I wanted to and, be respectful. And, and, I thank, and I thank you for that, because it's not something I'm proud of right okay, now. Okay, that, that's okay. That's well, okay. Let's say he's weighing in and could probably lose about 20 pounds from London, Ontario. <laughs> you may not be proud of that, but then here's the question. How proud are you are about how wrestling has adapted during the pandemic now that it's been happening for so long? It's been so fascinating to watch wrestling throughout this entire pandemic, back to the very beginning when they were kind of scrambling to figure things out and really just like using what they had and making the best of it and then turning that slowly into, well, this is what we have and we're going to do something amazing with it. And then just being able to take advantage of the situation and make these moments and make these matches that you couldn't have before because like you mentioned in the intro wrestling is very much a live audience experience and that's like one of the greatest things about it because like all the professional wrestlers you hear in interviews say like the audience is the third member of their match like they feed off of them off of their energy whether it be positive or negative and that makes the show go well when you take that away in a traditional sense you're taking away the heart of wrestling but you're able to add something new into it and that's been one of my favorite parts about wrestling in the pandemic through characters like the fiend having these firefly funhouse matches giving old wrestlers old legends the opportunity to look great again like sting in a street fight because he doesn't he doesn't have to actually have a match they can create this borderline cinematic thing that can be done in multiple takes and you're not having to have to look great and perform in front of a crowd so it hasn't all been bad and i think it's actually been really impressive how wrestling has adapted throughout the pandemic yeah because especially if you grew up only watching wf or wwe there's a lot of wrestling now so the pandemic in many ways came at the, at the worst possible time specifically for wrestling because I think we all know like the golden age, the attitude era, but then the mid 2000s onward, it was definitely like a downward slope. So in, in the grand scheme of things, we still have uh, WWE, so that's War Wrestling Entertainment, but then we also have uh, All Elite Wrestling, which has been running for about uh, two years, and that's led by a variety of different people, uh, including uh, Tony Khan, part of the owners of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, then you also have like Cody Rhodes. So a lot of wrestlers that decided to build a company, 
On another side, you have Impact Wrestling, which used to be TNA Wrestling, going all the way back to the very early 2000s. You know, even if you watch WWE, maybe you've heard of guys like AJ Styles and Samoa Joe, who are now like bona fide stars in WWE. They came from TNA, which then became Impact Wrestling. And then you have all their shows kind of like a Ring of Honor, uh, NWA was a thing, then it was not, and then it's going to be again. But how each one of them adapted to this whole concept of just like literally no audience, like people, if there's one thing that will always be fascinating to see is like that first week of lockdown where literally every single show was no audience, no sound, just the wrestlers. And Keith, in your case, when you think about the fact that that legit happened. Like, it's insane to think about. It's, yeah. It was a failure that needed to happen, I guess, because in a lot of ways, the pandemic forced things to change. Because in those opening weeks, they were trying to run the same show they would if there was a live crowd there. But it just fell kind of flat like in the the uh the gold example to me in this case was tna where that company has always been known for having very loud microphones under their rings because that way like when somebody takes a scoop slam or a slam you hear the bang you really hear it and then the crowd would kind of uh, compensate for that sound but without a crowd there it was just insanely loud crashes and bangs and just honestly the, kind of awkward and yeah exactly it ended up being awkward it felt like there was something missing and then as the pandemic went on they started to realize oh we need to figure this out we just can't rely on what we've been doing this entire time we need to do something new and that's the area where like that's my favorite type of innovation where you're kind of backed into a corner and have to adapt or else you're going to fail and wrestling did that in very different ways like all of those companies you mentioned did it a little differently yeah because for example you know we're, we're big fans of like disney marvel and all that and all of that stuff has been delayed but the final product looks the same right they delay mm -hmm. it so it looks the way you would think that would look. That's when you why watch they the next Marvel movie, you're not going to see exactly. the fact that it was filmed in a pandemic. You're going to see it a little later because it had to be filmed there, but you're not going to see something like Captain America with a Captain America mask on. Ain't gonna lie, I would love to see that though. <laughs> I, I really would love to see, love to see that. Oh, so like a little, like as a little Easter egg, he's wearing an Iron Man mask. Oh, it'd be great. Ooh, that that's a nice plot twist, man. Like if Thanos was still around, that that'd be cool to watch as well but yeah it's like with wrestling you don't get that they have because it's a weekly thing it's like well it is visually very obvious and even like that's when um it's like with a have you ever heard of, of songs without the backtrack and it's just like the vocals of a song yeah it gets awkward <laughs> it's really as good as tough the singing to listen. is right it's really tough to listen to because again it's this finished piece that's missing a part of it the same way that like a wrestling or like a wrestling show is missing a significant chunk of the finished product like imagine if you took it's it would be the same thing as like a marvel movie like imagine taking the special effects out of a guardians of the galaxy movie and it's just a bunch of awkward cgi characters rolling around and vin diesel voicing a tree and you just you you can see it but it's hard to watch because it's not all there exactly and then with wrestling that's what we got for for about let's say five months or so and then for better or worse i think this is when you can really tell the different aspects so wwe what they've done is called the thunder <laughs> it's the best name ever it is straight out of mad max they're just leaning into that post-apocalyptic style and they made the th -th 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 thunder dome because the whole concept for those that haven't seen it once again like i think this is like, if you've never watched wrestling or if wrestling was not for you, it's almost like the pandemic is the best time to watch it just because it's so different. It'll never, it'll never be like this again. The Thunderdome or the Thunderdome is basically a bunch of, imagine like a small 5,000 people arena or something, 
just LED panels all around. And what they did is they actually connect, like say you're on Zoom or Skype, whatever the hell it is, they connect you and you can actually see yourself. So visually it's just like hundreds of cameras. And then for better or worse, the sound, is literally the sound from the wrestling games. Like people have actually made direct comparisons so to like much. games that we love, like WWE 2K14. They legit use those background tracks for the cheering, mm, even the to booing. the chants. Like in that game, if they go like John Cena, John Cena, it's just ripped out of that. Uh, it's just ripped out of that video game. And and it's like it's kind of crazy, right? Because this is a televised show, but it it lets you know that that is maybe sometimes sometimes what needs to happen. In the case of All Elite Wrestling, which is the show that I know we have watched for the most part, uh, without getting too like too uh, into the not so great areas, a lot of wrestling is happening in Florida, right? All of you will kind of understand why that is happening. So it's in almost the case, like more things are open in Florida than they should be. Exactly. So uh, as wrestling fans, we reap the benefits, I guess, of them being able to do shows uh, from uh, Daly's Place, which is partially owned by the owner of All Elite Wrestling. So there they've been able, like the first thing they did, which was freaking awesome. It's, hey, all these wrestlers are getting tested. So why not have them be part of the audience? And it was freaking awesome because it's it like. It was great. Wrestlers know wrestlers are not just fans. They also know like what the wrestler is in the ring is hoping to get. So exactly. It's wrestlers kind of like are effort. performers. So they know how to, even if they're not in the match, they know how to perform to fill in that blank that the audience would take care of. And it's almost even better than having an audience because in a lot of, in a lot of times in the traditional wrestling sense pre pandemic there were times where the audience would try and hijack the show what? where they would go and yeah exactly with things like a what chant what, what? or weird silly stupid chants to throw what? a wrestler off um well, <laughs> that chant makes me angry when you do it to me i want to murder you <laughs> but um would but be the yeah, first so, time there was a lot of instances where the fans would almost go into business for themselves and try to ruin a show in some instances. But if your performers are the crowd, well, they're getting paid to make the best show possible. So you don't have to worry about that anymore. And if anything, it's a lot like a film. I mean, I've been an extra in a film, right? They tell me what to do. I get paid for it. And you do the same thing for five hours, get paid 400 bucks. I mean, mm -hmm. except wrestlers are get paid probably a little bit more than that just a but. little bit more and i mean like in an in a normal crowd if there's a heckler and somebody's trying to heckle you you can't touch them because you'll probably go to jail or get the company sued if you have a plant that's a heckler or a wrestler just slap them in the face and move on with your match pretty much now this just happened uh, last sunday and it's very interesting because wrestling now i mean knock on wood everything will vary last year's wrestlemania I was so sad because wrestling, especially WrestleMania without an audience, is not WrestleMania. You can have the logo. You can have the music. I actually tuned out for the first time ever. I have never turned away from a WrestleMania. We have been there live. And it's like, as a wrestling fan, I don't watch WWE anymore. I watch WrestleMania. And I was watching it last year. And my heart was just like, dude, turn it off. You see, this, I find that so work. interesting because I had the exact opposite reaction. Really? Because the, the, the WrestleMania before, I guess that would have been 35, if my numbers are You're correct. You're the one with the knowledge, man. And because it was a live show that had a crowd, it was like freaking 12 hours long. Like, I remember watching the main event of WrestleMania, which was Becky Lynch, Ronda Rousey, Charlotte in a triple threat match. That was at like one o'clock in the morning, my time. Oh, yeah, it the was shows just are 20 hours long exhausting titan of a show but because they didn't have an audience because they know like the fact that they couldn't put on this show and expect people to just sit through this crowdless 17 hour extravaganza and i'm using extravaganza in air quotes here they were forced to adapt and it, it changed the show into two way more palatable nights where it was, it turned into a weekend and not just a like, all right, it's I four o'clock on that. Sunday. That, that was actually one of the better ideas because 
the fact that each night, I will say, I watch the main events afterwards. It's like, oh, cool, night one, you want to make that last match really mean a lot more. Same thing yeah. with the second one, but it seems like they're not going to do it again this but year. But they are. With this this year, I believe WrestleMania is two nights again, is even with a crowd. Yeah. Okay. I actually didn't know that. So it's one of those instances where because of the pandemic, they had to change what they were doing and it becomes a better product in the long run because of it. Because God, if I, if I have to watch, if I have to watch part of a show the next day because I fell asleep and then like have to go back and see what I missed, that is a problem. Even if it's in the comfort of my own home, that is a problem. That is something that has gotten way too big for its own good. Oh yeah, without question. But This year, it'll be very interesting to see uh, what's going to happen with uh, WWE with that. It is cool that they're... The the marketing-wise, I would make it a little bit louder that it is a two-night event. Like, in the the article, it's there, but I think they should accentuate that even more. And it's Mm -hmm. awesome because it's like, it was already called WrestleMania Weekend. Now it literally is. No, it is a a weekend weekend. of WrestleMania. Poor local wrestling shows, though, when they come back. I mean, they are screwed. Because, like, for those who don't know a lot of smaller wrestling shows would piggyback on WrestleMania. And if WrestleMania was on a Sunday, then they would do shows Friday, Saturday, and even like Thursday. We actually went to a couple of those, and that's pretty awesome. Yeah, because it's a congregation of wrestling fans. And it's freaking insane. Yeah, it's insane. Everywhere you look, there's wrestling. Just show after show after show. If you want to submerge yourself in it, which WrestleMania weekend is the time to do it, you can literally go to a wrestling show starting Thursday night until Sunday night. That's all you can do. And it's a great thing. If anybody just loves wrestling and you haven't done WrestleMania weekend, like I can't recommend it enough. I've done three at this point and I'm good at this or like going forward. I've had my fill. But it's something it's that an every, experience that yeah you need to have everybody that. needs to experience it once if you love wrestling. Now, let's have the remaining portion of this podcast focus on a particular event that happened this past weekend called AEW Revolution. I was very excited for this because this was like during the pandemic. This was by far the most normal wrestling show where they had over a thousand fans in attendance. Once again, it's in Florida. Uh, so they had over a thousand fans in attendance. Uh, you have a lot of big matches with big hype. You know, the shows leading up to it also had audience. So it almost felt like just another wrestling show, but in a so positive let me, light. Let me ask you one, as far as what you watch during yeah. the pandemic. So you're not watching WWE no. every week, right? Thankfully. But are you are you keeping up with AEW every week? Oh, I'm watching. And yeah, I watch AEW Dynamite every Wednesday. I watch Dark, so I'm fully caught up. Yeah, and I watch is, BT. Is there any promotions that you watch uh, other than that religiously? I watch a little bit just... of Impact, obviously, because for those who don't know, something very interesting that's been happening during the pandemic is like cross promotion legally, like not 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 WCW invading WWE when clearly they were already bought out. Like they have actually legally collaborated impact wrestling and uh and uh AEW impact wrestling and imp- and uh new japan pro wrestling have also been mm-hmm. collaborating that's what a, about you oh buddy that's a huge one <laughs> no yeah. i'm so excited about that but yeah i'm about the same way where i dabble in wwe like i'll I, i'll never miss the big shows like i'll always watch royal rumble well, i'll always AEW watch now. wrestlemania yeah that's true i'll, I'll never miss an, a paul white appearance but I, i'll always like watch the rumble the survivor series summer slam and the in-between stuff i'll keep my finger on the pulse like i'm not gonna sit down and watch raw every week but i might fast forward like if i pvr it i might watch it and fast forward and stop at the parts that i find interesting i don't feel compelled to keep up with wwe tv but aew i'm like you i watch every week every wednesday i sit down i watch dynamite i carve out a block of my schedule to make sure that happens i'll watch dark as i work and i'm excited for even more wrestling with what what's it dark um Uh, elevation starting uh, tomorrow as of this uh, publishing yeah 
Yeah, so there's um, there, there's a lot of good AEW, and then, yeah, ever since that collaboration happened, like you mentioned, because that's another thing that the pandemic forced a lot of these companies to do, because unless you're the WWE financially, and you're this billion-dollar company, not having fans has hurt the bottom line a lot. Yeah, like, it destroys... I mean, yeah, I, I, I don't know official numbers because I don't work for these companies, but it's not hard to imagine that you are taking a financial loss at this point, or at least at best breaking even when it comes to running a business. So they were forced to co-promote and hope that it would boost business in the process. Like that's a hundred percent what this um, collaboration, especially with impact is because as a wrestling fan that did not give a crap about impact after the first little bit of this pandemic, now that people like Kenny Omega are showing up on it, which is the bit the, like the guy and my favorite wrestler on the planet. Now that he's showing up on impact, I will watch impact every week to make sure I don't miss that. So I think it's been nothing but a success as far as the cross promotion goes. And because of that, I've started watching more um, promotions outside of AEW, like the, um, the Impact Wrestlings of the World. I always keep a finger on the pulse of New Japan Pro Wrestling as well, and I'll catch the big shows and know the feuds that are going on there. And, like, I find myself excited for things like NWA Power to return and get back into the swing of things as... I feel like that's another ground to step in through the forbidden portal of wrestling and get itself into this cross promotional anybody can show up anywhere excitement that's going on right now. No, and and with that, it led to the not official U.S. return of the Bullet Club, but they bring up the name. So that means for those who don't know, Bullet Club was a huge faction in New Japan Pro Wrestling or those T-shirts you saw at Hot Topic. That's probably the the (laughs) real way that many people found out about that. But basically, it belonged to New Japan Wrestling. So wrestlers like uh, the Young Bucks, AJ Styles, they've had to say anything but the Bullet Club. But it seems like something's happening because they're openly referencing it on basically all the shows. And uh, Kenny Omega is like the pivotal pivotal person in just like transitioning he, he that back He was the here. leader of Bullet Club back exactly. when he was in New Japan Pro Wrestling. And then when AEW founded, they parted ways and was no longer leader of Bullet Club. But back then, like, there was a time when all of these top stars in AEW worked for New Japan and they were Bullet Club. And then they never kind of stopped being it except for legal reasons. And now it's okay again, but we're not sure if they are Bullet Club and it's a big mess and who knows. Yeah, and I think that's going to be the story, like the summer story. I think that as things continue to open up, but then here... You know, the former Dean Ambrose in WWE, John Moxley in AEW, he was the former champion. Kenny Omega uh, turned from a good guy to a bad guy, became champion, had this storyline with former Bullet Club members showing up. And then because John Moxley, Dean Ambrose, is known for his uh, hardcore style wrestling dating to pre-WWE, and Kenny Omega and him have had this long, awesome rivalry in AEW. Basically, since AEW almost started, you could even yeah, it say. Was star- it started on the first show when yeah. he got a paradigm, Kenny got paradigm shifted through a stack of poker chips. Yeah. I which, mean, again, is a sentence you can only say in professional only wrestling. Only wrestling people. And then, well, actually, this is the sentence you can't really, you can really, it's like exploding barbed wire death match. And that was the main event. So... It had a whole lot of different rules, including barbed wire that was wrapped around the ring ropes. Uh, Basically, anything that happened around that would provoke some kind of explosion. And if the match went over 30 minutes, the ring would explode. This is not a new match, by the way. This is something that was well known many years before. People like Terry Funk. I mean, that's a name mm-hmm. most it people was know. The match of a promotion in Japan called FMW, where that exactly. was like the big payoff match. And if anybody out there is wondering, no, they don't actually put bombs around the ring. There's not actual barbed wire. It's like uh barbed wire with the blades taken off of it and it's gimmick wrestling has changed like the bombs are just pyrotechnics that's exactly almost what happened i mean people got pretty close to dying now it's a much cleaner get it 
Yeah. Kenny Omega, yeah, yeah. the cleaner. No. Get the broom. R- Even Ryan, back then, Ryan edits the, audio, the video version. Ryan, don't cut me out, man. Love yeah. you. <laughs> I, and, and, but yeah, no, you should cut him out. But even back then, like, this might be a controversial thing. I've always hated the exploding barbed wire ring death match. I think it's one of the gimmickiest, lamest things that I've ever seen because it it was pointed out to me on a wrestling podcast that I listened to religiously, Something to Wrestle with Bruce Pritchard, that you have this exploding ring, but you also have fans five feet away from it. So you're telling me that you're putting all these people at risk just so you can have a bomb go off? No. It's just a couple of fireworks. <laughs> it's and basically it's, it's, it's lame. Like sprinklers or sparklers or whatever. It's and very... boy, was it ever in this match? In yeah, because <laughs> here's here's the reason I want to talk about this and why the world of wrestling is talking about it. The match itself, I think we can all agree it was a very good match. But much like uh, I didn't watch uh, Game of Thrones, but without getting into any spoilers, Keith, because I actually had this conversation with my wife, Nicole, like just yesterday. Would you say that, once again, without getting into spoilers, I never even watched Game of Thrones, but I know people were not a fan of the way that it concluded. Like, how much does the conclusion of this long, popular series affected you overall as a Game of Thrones fan? I think it's Im- It's very important to me as a fan and overall because it's really tough to word, but let me try my best here because that's kind of what we do on this show. But I think the ending is important, but I also think it's very oversold in the case in, in the case of like a Game of Thrones, like you spend all of this time and all of these years in some cases building up in your head both yours personally and collectively as a fan base what you want this ending to be. And I don't think most of the time it's possible for a series to live up to the expectations that have been put on it for an ending. It's the same, it's why you see so many things be considered failures or disappointments once that ending yeah, is finally... Yeah, because people build their own story, and yeah. if what happens isn't that, then they're just let down. The more popular something is, the higher the expectations get. And there comes a point where it is just insanely unreasonable. Like, you even saw that recently with WandaVision. I haven't seen the show yet personally. I'm, I plan on doing that in a couple of weeks. But I just remember all of this hate online for the ending of WandaVision division because people just ran with it and ran with what they wanted that to be and in a lot of instances that's the case where i think it's treated unfairly that the hate that it gets because of it and it shouldn't diminish as a fan it shouldn't diminish the rest of the experience like it It doesn't matter what you think about the ending of Game of Thrones. It doesn't matter what you think about the last two seasons of Game of Thrones. Were they not as good as the rest of it? Absolutely, in my opinion. But that doesn't mean you still don't have those first five or six seasons that you can go back to and love. Like, even though the writing got worse as they ran out of material in Game of Thrones, that doesn't mean the writing from the first few seasons is any less bad. It is still there, and you still have that that you can look at and appreciate. And I swear this point is getting around to a barbed wire death match. You just wait a minute. <laughs> oh, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. People and, are going to be like, okay, I want to see how these two guys just like... <laughs> <laughs> pull, pull the switch over there. Yeah, eh? Just, just bring, just bring it back. Bring back the explosive yeah. switch. And I think that's what happened with this barbed wire match in question. Because for anybody that, even if you're not a wrestling fan, if you haven't seen it, figure out a way. I'm not going to tell you how because, well, it may be a little un or questionable legal wise. Figure out how to watch the end of this match and see what happens. It wasn't great. Yeah, so and, let me let me quickly like establish the, the context of that mm-hmm. for those that haven't checked it out. So the match itself ended X or Y person won. It's largely irrelevant to the context of what's happening here, right? Mm-hmm. 
the whole concept and the buildup. So the buildup was at 30 minutes, if people are not out of the ring, the it damn thing is going to blow up. So you are building up that actual anticipation. And let's not forget that unlike a Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones is, that was on HBO, right? Yes. So you're subscribed to it. You're not buying, you're not watching Game of Thrones to then buy the Game of Thrones pay-per-view on top of that, right? The whole concept of wrestling has always been, you watch the weekly shows, the lead up to the big uh, big payoff at the pay-per-view. So the match ends, shenanigans happen, and John Moxley is left in the middle of the ring. Then we get a countdown. People start freaking out. The whole thing's going to blow up. Just before it blows up, Eddie Kingston, which is somebody that in the world of wrestling non-nationally, uh, has been widely recognized for easily over a decade, and him and Moxley have this hateful rivalry. So he actually decides to come out there and save his life. So from a story standpoint, I'm like, dude, this is like some deep stuff. These two hated this each other. awesome. Exactly, that here he is trying to save him. There's 10 seconds left, and... Even even before the pyro ain't gonna lie, it's a little hokey what happened because he totally had enough time to, to get him out of the ring. Like let's just let's just call a spade a spade. But then he puts his body over John Moxley's body, kinda like to take this a is, grenade. He's, yeah, he's taking an explosion for his enemy because exactly. his enemy used to be his friend. And then the explosion, people. You know, like when you know when this it's is like what Christmas. you need to Google. This is what you need to Google. Exactly. Out you know there. when in Christmas when you have like the the light fireworks that all the kids are just right next to, and then there's like maybe like a couple of smoke bombs, like those little sparklers. Halloween. You know those little those long like uh, pussy willow looking things that you light and then they kind of fizzle out for a bit and Imagine make the big, little noise. Four big versions of those. Uh. uh I'm going to say a loud boom at the end, but I'm being very kind about this. <laughs> and that was it. And then not only was that awkward, the announcers say nothing for like five seconds. Because yeah, they you sell could it. feel they're yeah. like. No, no, but before that, there was oh. a silence that you could tell they're like, we are seeing this, and the, the script is telling me to react like they died. But it they clearly didn't happen. But then they went along with it. So the yeah. announcers are selling this like death. Eddie Kingston passed out. Everybody freaking out. The audience cannot be booing this more. And my power went out just before this. So literally, I missed two of the previous matches. And I got to the end where this one ended. I'm like, I, I got power back for this. Yep. This is what's Talk happening. Talk about uh, going out with a whimper. And then... The basically like doctors are trying to like get them. They're they're passed out, and afterwards, John Moxley. I guess I mean these men must have hated this. I mean, let's be honest. He actually mm -hmm. cut a promo off air, but they even kind of aired it on uh, Facebook, saying, "Hey, Kenny Omega can't uh, make explosions." So they it'll be interesting to see what happens. Like we are recording this on a Monday, so we don't know how they save this, right? But yeah, then they haven't they have an out. Exactly, but but put it this way, that was the payoff. So before we get to like the next step, wrestling has taught us that the turn, the good guy, the bad guy, the shenanigans towards the end, that is what you work for. How much do you think people will remember that moment as opposed to the whole show, not just the last match? Oh, it is the only thing people will remember in the same way that everybody remembers it it's been a thing in res wrestling forever nobody remembers the match between stone cold steve austin and Shawn michaels at wrestlemania 14 they remember austin winning the championship and then him taking the uh going to the ring post smashing the beers and starting off uh starting off his championship reign people remember moments in wrestling and in this case, I think it's something that's going to overshadow the entire match, maybe the entire pay-per-view forever. And it's a damn shame because of it. This is where my long tangent of Game of Thrones kind of comes in, because up until that moment, it was something special. The thing that really separates, like, great wrestling from everything else is the ability to tell a story in the ring wrestling isn't just this at least anymore it isn't just this 
carny style i don't like you i'm gonna beat you up or oh you looked at me the wrong way so now we need to have a flaming tables match like the era of that is kind of gone at this point and when they're having these matches they're telling these intricate stories just from the bar of naturally being like raised as far as what you're doing inside of the ring over time and when it comes to that Some of the two best people in wrestling were in that match, being Kenny Omega and Jon Moxley. And they told a great story up until that wet fart of a finish, (laughs) up until the sprinklers went off. And it just, unfortunately, probably will overshadow everything. And like you mentioned, we're recording before any follow-ups happened, and... It could be an instance that they turn it into a negative because like anything in life, it's all about perception, right? If you have the ability to take a negative and turn it into a positive, well, then you're controlling the uh, you're controlling the conversation in a way that you're able to move forward. And I'm hoping that's what happens. And we just we need to move on from it. (laughs) Yeah, no, but I, I think conversations like this are always important because it's like, wrestling once again not only have they conditioned us to think about this but that was the whole marketing right if the marketing was it's like a whole lot of people said like that last part totally didn't need to happen if the marketing was well this guy won hey we'll we'll see you next wednesday but they built up so much that the ring was gonna blow up it's kind of like they made special emphasis like exactly you know you know it's gonna happen when they make an like a special point of the ring will explode after 30 minutes and the thing is people have seen matches go in 30 minutes (laughs) exactly and then people have seen the ring collapse with the big show and brock lesnar so People have had a visual reference of what a ring being destroyed in some capacity looks like. So it's like you can't promote something if you're if you're not willing to do it, don't promote it. Yeah, don't talk for, about for it. movies or, or anything else, right? And uh, I, I think it was important that we had this uh, conversation. And whether you watch wrestling or not, we really would love to get everybody's feedback just about like what have you heard about wrestling or what made you fall off the bandwagon in wrestling i think a lot of us have different years some people definitely dropped off like after 2001 others dropped off 2006 2007 2011 2010 i know there was another drop off so there's definitely different eras or or just parts where people face off and we can have this conversation on our discord if you want to have this great conversation with us we do have a wrestling channel at a cast of the past.com slash discord we also have a a movie one food one video game tcg lego whatever the hell we talk about we basically end up making a channel so we can justify our spending on unnecessary hobbies and exactly if you like we, we can the, uh, feel oh, good go about poor decisions together exactly but, what else is what else is there to live for these days <laughs> but a non poor decision will be to leave that five star review keith right absolutely it helps us out in a major way on whatever pl- or platform you're listening to us on please Take your time, give an honest review. If you like what we do, let us know and let the rest of the world know because if we're the best kept secret on the internet, we don't want to be a secret anymore. Exactly, the secret's out. And and speaking of secrets, so uh, pretty soon, for those that are fans of wrestling during the Attitude Era or towards the tail end of it, we thought long and hard about which WrestleMania to review this year or wrestling show and Man, we are we are choosing the one. It is WrestleMania. Turns out the answer wasn't very uh, long and hard to think yeah. about because it is the WrestleMania. WrestleMania 17, people. So that is Rock Austin. Uh, a whole lot of things. I mean, just the whole freaking show is basically. Let me ask awesome. you. Let, let, let's get a little. Let's get a little tease of this. When I say the words WrestleMania 17, what are the first things that come to mind? First thing, actually. What's Raven the first in a thing? cart. <laughs> raven in a cart i don't know why as a kid it, that was always like it's the most forgettable match and just some ways it's like big shows thrown in there and all that but just raven in that is easily one of my favorite things mm-hmm. just, i for love me, it so much the backstage for me it's limp biscuit hey that is WWE's favorite band in the whole live world <laughs> 
Did you know that? I did know that. And they were very excited when they performed their hit song, Crack Addict, live. <laughs> Man, some songs don't have the test of time as far as uh, uh, song selections go. But yeah, hopefully everybody enjoyed this uh, casual conversation about wrestling. Like, uh, we are not a wrestling podcast. We focus ma- mainly on games and movies, but we are naturally wrestling fans. So every couple of months or so, we like to sprinkle in a little bit of that square circle love. Hey, it, hey, that, that should be the things like the square. Actually, no, that's probably some kind of uh, website that people should not search. Yeah, I'm not it's saying like, it exists, but it probably does. It's like when there was that faction, the Submission Sorority. You shouldn't oh, Google yeah. that at work. Yeah, don't don't be googling that, people, because then Keith will get you into trouble as he talks in a cast to the past. People, may you never, may may you never say something's gonna explode, only to then fall short. <laughs> I don't See? think that means what you think it means. <laughs> See, like the moment that I started saying <laughs> it, I knew where that was going. But I could go back, I could go back. <laughs>